Hey everyone, Misanthropy here from SpellsOfMagic.com. Today on Misanthropy's Magic Corner, we are going to be discussing some ritual tools. In this video, we will be going over cauldrons, wands, and our Book of Shadows. So get your cauldrons and spell books ready, and let's get to it. So the first item we'll be discussing is our cauldron. Cauldrons are associated with female energies and the element of water. In rituals, they can be used for cooking, they can be used for scrying, potion brewing, ritual bathing, and in some cases, ritual fires. I actually use my cauldron on my altar in the winters to burn spell items and incense, and as a place to hold small ritual fires, just because here in the mountains it's far too cold to actually have fires outside. So if you need something to contain fires in or to burn spell items, small cauldrons like this are always the way to go in my opinion just because they are cast iron they hold heat well and you don't have to worry about anything catching on fire when you're using them the next item we'll be discussing is the wand now wands are a phallic symbol they are associated with power and virility they can store and direct energy and most often they are used in circle casting to help create the circle or to direct energies within it. They can also be used for invoking deities or spirits. Their elemental associations are fire and air. You can use wood to make your wand. You can find crystal wands. I've also seen metal and glass wands used. Now, when making a wand, it doesn't have to be anything special. You can do something as simple as just getting a small tree branch and carving it and sanding it down to suit your purposes. Now, certain woods, have associations with certain things for magical practice. For example, this wand I have here is oak, and oak is an overall good wand uh, for magical practice because it's a very strong director of energy and power. However, it's also useful in spells for growth, abundance, luck, healing, and health, just because that's some of the things that the oak tree itself is associated with. So you can actually get wands associated with certain spells if you plan on working with that certain area of magic. For example, if you want to work on just healing or healing spells, selenite crystal is actually a good uh, medium for wand creation just because it is a strong amplifier of healing magic and energy associated with it. So this is where we will stop our discussion on wands. And the next thing we will move, move on to is our Book of Shadows. This is another topic that comes up quite often on SpellsOfMagic.com just because a lot of newbies are confused or have questions about how to make a Book of Shadows and what they can use for it. The Book of Shadows doesn't need to be anything fancy. I've seen things like three ring binders used or spiral bound notebooks. In this modern day and age, I've even seen people use Google Docs. Word documents and PDF files as a place to house their information for their Book of Shadows. Traditionally, a Book of Shadows is just a handwritten uh, reference for you for your spells, rituals, and works of magic. What I have here as an example is just a small journal that I got from Walmart. Now, when I make mine, I like to start out with a section for your magic basics, which covers visualization, meditation, um, belief center and grounding, and things like that. Then I move on to information on the ritual tools. I have a section for colors, days of the week, and lunar cycles. I have an herb section and their associations. I also have a section for gems and crystals. You can even um, add information on circle casting and releasing if you plan on working with circles. I have information on spirit guides. Now, when you're setting up your book of shadows, I always suggest you do it in such a way that it makes it easy for you to actually sort through the information. That's why I always suggest starting with the basics and then correspondences and circle casting. And then after that, you can add in information on your herbs or crystals. You can follow it up with sections specifically for spells and ritual. And then you can end it with information on your deities or a specific practice or path that you follow. My preferred method, however, for creating a book of shadows is actually using the three ring binder just because you can get these um, inserts that you can easily take out or move around if you need to reorganize or remove information from your book of shadows and make room for new and in the same method what i've done here though is i've just done a nice little cover page for it 
you don't have to, it's just personal preference. But um, I have information on coven hierarchy. If you work within a cover or uh, a path, here, let me move this so you can see it. Um, and then I have a guide for the basics. I have information on my herbal, my herbs, my herbal grimoire section. I have a section for crystals again, since it's something that I work with quite often. I have information on energy raising and chanting with the cone of power. And then I have a miscellaneous section for like things like lucid dreaming and information that didn't quite fit into the other sections. And I also have a section here for tarot cards. And then in the way, way back, I have information on symbols and um, runes. Well, that's not runes, I apologize. These are the runes. And that's just kind of to give you a basic idea of how to set up your Book of Shadows and what you can do with it. If you have any questions on anything we've covered here today, please feel free to contact me on spellsofmagic.com. And as always, stay magical.